Hello and welcome everyone to this week's episode. Um, for this week's episode, we're going to be talking about the positive and negative effects of social media. So we've all, you know, gathered here today and we've, we've created this wonderful presentation on this topic and we're going to be going over quite a few things um, about this here. So if you have any questions at any time and you're interacting via the live chat on Facebook, please feel free to ask us questions or, you know, interject or um, just leave a comment at any time. So uh, I'm Carlo once again. Um, and if you've tuned into the last post, you'll know that I'm an actor, singer, artist, and I'm recently, or I'm currently studying my education degree at Queen's University. And I'll pass it off to anyone else who wants to do a little intro of themselves. <clears throat> yeah, my name is Ravin Du. And if you guys remember last time, um, I'm also one of the speakers and hosts today. And yeah, I'm, a, I'm more of the business side and been learning this about marketing and social media and be happy to talk with you guys today about it. So I'll pass it on to Jasenia. Hi, everyone. I'm Jess. I'm just currently completing my third year in the commerce program at Queen's University. Yeah, we really hope you enjoyed our last session last time. It was really interesting um, and engaging with everyone. And we hope to see more questions, more comments. Please share with your family and friends and really looking forward to getting into it tonight. So I'll pass it on to Hanya. Hi everyone, um, I'm Hanya. So today we're gonna to be talking about positive and negative effects of social media. Before we begin, I'm gonna just introduce myself again. So I'm a blogger, YouTuber. I am also, um, I love social media a lot. And on top of that, I'm, in, I'm currently a second city student and I'm currently running for City of Brampton pages 2022. So you'll be seeing that very soon on different media, on, on different like flyers and social media throughout. Thank you. I think we can all agree that we love social media. <laughs> and have found a new appreciation for it over the pandemic and during this time. I know I definitely have. Um, so who is starting off here today on our conversation? Yeah, so I think we're beginning with a question for our audience. So we want to ask you all, how has social media helped you cope with quarantine during the pandemic? Now, I know before this, of course, social media was a huge thing. We were using it to connect with family and friends, um, you know, using it for work and a whole bunch of things. But I feel like the last year and a half has really put social media into a whole different light and perspective. And now we're using it for things that we didn't know before. And it's kind of, you know, shaping our entire society and the, the way our society does things and is constructed, whether it's you know, having employees that have gone into the office for centuries, you know, hundreds of years now being able to do the exact same thing online. That's, that's, that's something huge. So that's just one example, but I would love to hear everyone's perspective. So uh, please put it into our Facebook chat and you as you guys as well. Um, please give your, give your perspectives on how, you know, the, with quarantine, how social media has helped you cope. Yeah, if you're interacting at any time, definitely feel free to answer this question throughout the presentation. Um, if I'll speak first to that, it's definitely been a game changer for me trying to stay fit and cope with the gyms being closed throughout the pandemic because, of course, they were not open. So a big thing for me was finding YouTube workouts and YouTube fitness tips and going on my TikTok and finding um, little tips and tricks there for at home workouts. And I think that really helped me cope um, with quarantine and lockdown during that time. So a couple of great um, YouTube channels that I can recommend is um, uh, Jess Wilson, uh, Fraser Wilson, um, uh, the bully juice. That's another one. There's a lot out there that can give you really great, um, 10 to 15 minute home workouts where you don't have to have any equipment. And, uh, for me, I know personally, like, you know, just having a certain level of fitness and not, you know, getting too comfortable and, and sitting on the computer all day long, or, you know, watching too much Netflix all day long, or even just scrolling through social media all day long is, is super important and was super important throughout the pandemic. So, how about any of you guys? Let's see, we have a question here or a comment. Allowed me to connect with family long distance. Definitely helped my mental health. I felt less isolated. Well, that's, of course, for sure. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that, uh, Cynthia. That's amazing. Um, I think, you know, it's interesting because I was just talking about this with one of my students 
um, I teach ESL online to students in China. And we were talking about this exact same thing this morning and how it, you know, it's so interesting how I'm connecting to this student in China, this long, long distance now. And we have this kind of technology and it's just improving more and more and more. So I'm really excited to see where that goes. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia, for the comment. Um, anybody else want to interject a little bit and talk about how it's helped them? Um, I will. So social media has helped me a lot during the quarantine because um, due to what I know, I've done a lot of my trainings, which I found out through social media. And I was lucky enough to actually do them through Zoom as where when it came to actually, uh, when it came to actually commuting there to most places, they were in downtown, which was actually hard for me because if you live in Brampton, it's harder to commute to downtown to most programs. So I actually use social media as a resource to find out all these amazing programs and most of Canada being one of them. And then um, from there, that's how I actually, I, I use social media to utilize myself and use it to um, to work on my professional development. So it helped me in that. Perfect. Yeah, and uh, for me, like I said, Tuesday for social media, it really, during the pandemic, you know, when there was a lot of lockdowns and, you know, we were all home, I actually started using social media more. And that's when I eventually got into that business side of social media a little bit more. And that's kind of how I've been experiencing with social media during the quarantine. It's been a, a great like side hustle for me and learning about it and using it for marketing techniques, as well as it's been kind of like, you know, I feel like there's a negative side to it too, is like I spend a lot more time on social media now than I used to do before, right? So I know we'll be talking about that in the, later on today. So you guys want to go to the next slide? Definitely. Um, you know, Ruben, do I definitely agree? I think um, we will touch on that later as we go on. But as much as it has brought us together, I think, you know, it, it, it also brings us sometimes a false sense of reality. So, yeah, yeah anyways, we'll continue and uh, we'll, we'll talk about both sides during our presentation. Yeah, great points you guys that's that's fantastic um let's definitely keep this question in mind as we move forward and once again anybody in the in the live chat here or in the stream feel free to interact and then if you're watching this later on definitely leave a comment down below as i know this is going to be posted on our other platforms later on so moving forward let's talk about this one yeah okay so Social media brings communication. So, you know, back back a few years ago, I'm sure some of us can remember maybe before we were born even, um, things weren't done with the snap of, it, of a finger like it, it is now. Before it was mail and telegrams and that was your main form of communication and things could take, you know, weeks or even months to get from one continent to another, where as now it's really with just the click of a button. So it definitely has brought our communication a lot more closer and, you know, for, for the good and the bad, for example, some people, I know sometimes um, when I, where, where I was working this summer, um, because everyone's so connected all the time, even when you're not working, people are still sending messages and kind of that work-life balance has kind of, you know, blurred mm -hmm. in a way because, um, the communication is so instant. So, but whereas on the other hand, you know, if you have a friend or a family member who lives somewhere else, you're still able to remain close in contact. And, you know, that was something important for me because in my first year, when I moved to Queens, you know, it's, it's two or three hours away from home. So that communication where I could still talk to my parents, my friends was super important for me. And, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it through, through without social media. So Definitely. And once again, Cynthia uh, Phillips in the comment section there below, thank you so much for bringing that up. I think that's such an important um, point, right? And I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely had some game nights and some online uh, Discord nights or, you know, Facebook chat nights um, where we, you know, played games with some close friends. Um, and none of that was possible without the use of this kind of technology. And like I said before, I think it's just going to keep, keep improving, hopefully, as we move forward. So, yeah. Also, I like to add something like you guys definitely got brought up some great points. I think social media, it's, it's crazy how, you know, we, the technology has changed so much. Like, you know, if you think way back, you know, to talk to someone, you'd have to, you know, use a phone and you'd have to pay to call somebody in a different country. Right. And now because of, you know, social media and the power of social media, we can talk to anybody anywhere in the world just from, you know, our apps, as long as we have Wi-Fi. And it's a crazy thing to think about on the power of communication. It's almost like 
we're all connected through the internet almost. That's right. Do you guys remember when Skype was a big thing? Yeah. Remember, remember when Skype was at its peak, right? Do you guys remember that? I think that yeah. was like such an exciting yeah. point for video calls and video chat, but like the quality was never great. And it was kind of, yeah. you know, on the lower tier of things, they were still kind of, you know, weeding some things out. And then nowadays we can literally do it on any platform, any pl- like Instagram, Facebook, Snap, like anything has this like Zoom ish yeah. kind of thing that and goes about it. And the thing is, you can do right? video call on all of them too. Like often, yeah. like, uh, like I, like, I have like relatives all over, like all over the place. Right. So with them, I'm connected to them on social media and I'm always keeping in touch with them. We don't talk daily, but I always know what they're doing. They're always seeing what I'm doing and we always support each other like that. So it's a good way because you don't need to like, you know, get a calling card and like have to spend like $5 on that and I have to wait for another like two hours just to get on the call, just to call them like that, that, that is like the whole um, evolution of social media because it keeps you so connected. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm going to go forward to the next one here. All right. Increases participation. Yeah. So I think um, to go along with the communication, they kind of go hand in hand that with social media, it really has helped in increase the increase of participation, whether it's, you know, I see a lot of a lot of people my age and students being really involved in, you know, current affairs and what's going on in the world. For example, the election that's about to happen in the next few days. People are talking about that because, you know, even even if you're not watching the news, the tr- traditional news channels, it's everywhere. It's, um, you know, on, on your Snapchat feed, you'll see something sometimes on Instagram, even if you're not following any of the figures, it's still through ads. So I think um, participation, whether it's in different activities online, you know, throughout quarantine, we, we, we have seen so many of the normal things that we would do in person, whether it's game nights, all of those things move on, move to online. And it's a great way to help and for everyone to stay, um, stay connected to each other and continue to have those things that really bond them. So I think participation and that connectivity really goes hand in hand and um, they are able to express themselves. You know, it's, it is positive self-expression. People have become musicians and artists, and I'm sure Carlo, you could speak to this as well through, through social media alone. And we touched on this last um, through our last session on Tuesday, but um, the amount of, the amount of people that have through social media in the last year even have increased just because you are able to participate in so many things that um, maybe a live concert or something wouldn't wouldn't have allowed. Yeah, exactly right. I think that that's a a really great point. Um, I mean, do I mean question there for you, though? Do do you often watch your Snapchat feed stories? I'm really curious as to what kind of comes up there as a social media platform. Do you do you often watch your snap stories that are recommended to you? I do sometimes like yesterday, hmm. actually, one of the um, Jagmeet Singh, one of the um, oh, wow. OK, who was running for yeah prime minister. He came up on my Snapchat and I ended up watching a story. So, you know, okay. uh, I feel like just because I'm already on the app, maybe watching a friend's story just to see see that there as well. It's like, why not? Why don't I click on it and educate myself a little bit more? Yeah. And I mean, that's well, that's exactly the point I was just going to make. Right. It's like we have our friend stories that we're watching, keeping up to date on our friends. And then we have the current affairs and what's going on in the news and politics right beside it. Right. And guys, um, everyone, this goes without saying, if you haven't voted yet and you're of the age to vote, please make sure to vote, go do that. It's super, super important. Um, uh, obviously it goes without saying, but you know, just want to throw that in there as well. Um, and yeah, I think it's, I think it's super cool uh, as an idea. And we, you know, we didn't touch too much on Snapchat as a, a platform in our last presentation in our last podcast but I think that that's also kind of a cool one that's been around for quite some time and has definitely changed and shaped the way other apps have been kind of interacting with each other right because I remember the filters for example for one was like a huge thing that Snapchat only had and now you can do it on like Instagram and Facebook and stuff and they each have their own unique games and all that kind of kind of thing that interacts with you so that's that's uh that's that's pretty cool to uh to touch on i find that i go in and out of using snapchat myself right i I definitely like go more i think to instagram but i'm gonna now check out what gets recommended to me on snapchat just because you said that so that's a really great point definitely do it yep yeah, I just want to add something there. Um, when you talked about like all the politicians and stuff, I remember <clears throat> in Snapchat there used to be like the news channel, right? And then you could watch like these like ten seconds of the news. And I remember 
that was like so great because you don't want to go watch like you know 40 minutes of the news you could just watch it on your snap story like 15 20 minutes like 15 oh gosh minutes. yes i don't right? think i could handle 40 minutes of news nowadays exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's really cool how social media is like everybody's on it now and if you're not on it you're like behind right so it's, it's really cool how it keeps us connected but at the same time like that connection is also really far away too if you think about it right so it's a cool thing to look at and think about. Only one thing I didn't like about Snapchat is, is that in there, whenever you take a photo over the filter or anything, you have to send it to someone. So you can like put it in there as like, uh, as like for your, uh, for your account. So that's the only one thing that I didn't like about it. Other than that, it's like, it's features were pretty good. You can save but it it's like, too now though, if you don't want to send it yeah. to anyone. Yeah. Yeah, that option is in there. Yeah. So that's all I was going to add. Want to? Do we want to talk about how it strengthens relationships now moving forward? Yeah, for sure, I, I think um, you know. Just speaking from my perspective <clears throat> as a university student, I had about a semester and a half um, at university before it shut down. But who I really felt for was the next year students, whether it was in high school or university, who were who were starting out, and you know they're their main form of building these relationships with one another and becoming friends was through a virtual platform. And I was really interested to see how that um, played out for them, because I know it definitely would have been hard for me, whether, you know, whether it's online, it's, it's not, it's really not the same thing as getting to meet someone in person, but I think now speaking to them, now that they're back on campus and interacting, they said that that I, you know, it, the whole quarantine and everything, it kind of, it kind of tested your your relationships and your friendships in a way. Who are those people that are going to reach out to you and check up on you when you're not seeing each other every day out of, you know, pure habit? So I think that, um, yeah, social media definitely, you know, strengthens relationships through that way. But um, it also goes to show during our pandemic, too, and everything that we've been through over the last couple of years that um, how how essential it is nowadays, because without it, you really do. It's hard to it's hard to remain in contact and keep in touch with those same people um, than than before. So I love that point about, you know, almost testing your friendships in some ways too, right? Testing the ones that are going to make it. And I mean, that's kind of a real thing to say, but I think it's, I think it brings up like a lot of, you know, feelings and emotions and real things that have happened, right? People have both disconnected and connected more. I mean, like, for, for myself, some relationships with friends got stronger while others kind of diminished. And I think that naturally happens, but it's interesting how social media can either propel that or help that along as <clears throat> well. So yeah, that's, that's, that's really, really cool. Yeah. I know you guys. Oh, Sorry, go ahead. Go okay. okay sure. Yeah. So um, I know how you guys both talk about friends, right? And for one thing that's for me, especially is because I'm originally from Sri Lanka, right? And most of my family is still back home. I think really the power of social media really keeps me connected with my family, like my grandparents and my cousins. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool that before, if there was no such thing as social media, like it would almost be like we're strangers because I've been gone for so long. But because we have social media, these accounts, they can always kind of keep in touch with what's going on in my life right it's almost like they're there throughout my life even if they're not there right especially if you have like an instagram or facebook you know you're posting snapchat stories so i think that's really good on build, building relationships and strengthening them and that goes uh, you know hand in hand with what we're covering now about the building bridges over barriers right like i'm sure I'm sure you felt in the beginning, you know, always a sense of isolation in the beginning when you're moving to a new country and you have majority of your friends and family somewhere else. But um, I feel like because of social media, people are able to connect with people and become friends um, through through a screen and without any judgment or, you know, preconceived notion before and where whatever their culture is, wherever they're from, everyone, you know, is kind of on like is the same you know you're if you're on zoom you're a black box there's no other distinction between you you're all kind of equal and I think that's something that 
some of the barriers maybe before if so if people were you know unable to connect with people from different cultures and different ba- backgrounds and upbringings um social media has kind of built that bridge and connected people from different places and you know you're able to then understand people's perspectives and become more aware whether it's becoming more sensitive and understanding towards the challenges others have faced or becoming more aware of what's going on and how you can you know reach out and support those people so um yeah that's another that's another thing about social media for me when strengthening relationships and building uh like uh, bridges over barriers one thing i've noticed with social media is in the pandemic like there was a lot of people that, I, that at one point i had on my social media like what were you talking about like friendships being tested in there so there was a lot of people i actually had at one point on my facebook and now as like as um as like I get as like now as we are as me and my friends what I've been touch with with years there's like we're still connected through social media but there's like half of us we just we see each other's things and often with the ones that I felt like I couldn't go further it's like I just like leave them because I felt like we had nothing else to talk about so it's like I feel like our friendship has just like uh has just like fell over like that because in person and there was nothing else to talk over and one thing I noticed is like um where I've been volunteering for so long is that often um that there's a lot of people on social media that just like to just like to see what you do and like to look for complaints. So what I did was over the pandemic, like I noticed a lot of people were doing that on me just because I also have a YouTube channel too and I'm all the time, I'm all the time somewhere. So I had to actually block a few people because of that reason, because I felt like they were always sneaking up and they were all, look, they were all they was always looking for something on my social media. So that so that's something that's like something that could also be like problematic at the same time if you have too many people or if you just had every person is that sometimes they're always looking for some kind of a problem or some kind of complaint. As when it comes to uh, barriers and bridges in that thing, I would say that social media is a resource because most of the things that I thought I could never do, I'm actually doing it now because of the pandemic. So that's all I'd like to add. Yeah. Thanks, Anya. Yeah, that's 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 amazing. I think that it's it's really uh, important to recognize that not all of our interactions on social media are going to be positive. And I think that's a huge part of this presentation, right? I mean, it's it's only a matter of time. I mean, I cannot tell you how many hate comments I've gotten on YouTube videos before. <laughs> like, if I'm just being completely honest and real, right? And I it's agree. like, yeah, I know, agree. I know what you mean. Yeah, YouTube especially, Hanya, right, can be just such a a platform where people are leaving kind of these negative comments. I find if we're going to judge platforms and like put them on a scale, I think like YouTube in terms of hate comments is definitely quite up there. (laughs) Just speaking from personal experience, right? And I would say that everyone just writes whatever they can think of. And it's like, it's like you see like a few good comments and you see like a like five negative ones. Yes. And, you know, sometimes people tend to forget that that's a human being on the other side of that screen. Right. And I've, I've, I've heard that, you know, said kind of a lot throughout my time um, looking into content creators and seeing what they recommend and kind of that struggle that you go through sometimes. But if you're a TikTok content creator, if you're a YouTube content creator, if you post on Instagram, there's a level of risk because, and we'll get into this a little bit later because your, your brain and you're, you being a human naturally mm-hmm. wants um, validation. And you also want um, to be compared to other people at a competitive level, right? And so um, people are just going to react that way sometimes. That's that's how it happens, right? I just want to say uh, thank you, Lynn, for making those comments. I think these are great conversations. And uh, hello to Samira in the live chat. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Let us know. And you can, um, you can definitely just... Uh, uh, we'll answer them to the best of our abilities here. Should I just move on to the next one here, you guys? Let's do boost their confidence. Yeah, so let's flip the switch a little bit and talk about boosting people's confidence. Yeah, yeah. I, I can start this off with um, just saying, I think especially it's like now we're in this like era of like, oh, what what do other people like, like right? So sometimes when posting on Instagram and you see a lot of likes coming in, you know, that makes you feel kind of good, right? Doesn't it? Have you guys felt that like you post an Instagram post and you get like, you know, 40, 50 or like even hundreds of likes and you're like, man, makes oh, you feel yeah. better. And it shared, you feel even better because you feel like, okay, <clears throat> and now people are actually like, you know, they're seeing it or maybe it might be the next big thing. So it's exactly. a good thing. Oh, yes. Exactly. Yeah. It's and an instant hit of dopamine, right? It, to it your is. Brain. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it is pretty much a drug if you think about it, social media, right? Um, in a sense of, 
that, but does anyone else want to say anything about that? Yeah, I, I think um, one of the things is, and Carlo, you mentioned this before, it's that validation and the instant gratification that we get sometimes by, oh, this number of likes or these number of followers, these number of shares. And for sure, you know, it can boost your confidence and make you feel good about yourself, especially if, you know, you've done something to help your community, community for example, and are sharing that or you've you know mastered a skill or a new art and you're sharing that it's it can help you to grow grow your platform grow your grow your business of course but um i think there there definitely is another side to that and how that instant grat- gratification and that validation can also be negative in a way um because at the end of the day these are just people uh, you know behind their screens liking and commenting and usually people don't think before they post so uh, exactly I think that's a huge thing people need to start doing. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, truthfully speaking, like nowadays you can be held accountable for absolutely everything that you say and do, right? And so you should yeah. always try and represent yourself in the most professional, positive way at, and respond. even responding to those hate comments that we were talking about earlier, right, is definitely um, can be done in a way that is... Um, you know, accepting of any criticism that, you know, comes to you, but also in a way that is like, I'm, I'm recognizing that you might just be lashing out on me because you are having a bad day. Right. Yeah, and, exactly. and not necessarily that you did anything wrong. So that's also something that we can, when, when you guys were talking about that, it reminded me of, I remember this TikTok person, he was like, so if somebody comment, like did hate comments on someone, he would actually end up finding all the information about this person and then like telling their school. And I don't know, that's, that's, I don't know if you guys saw that video on TikTok. He's like, don't recommend uh, doing that by the way. No, everyone, yeah, don't but... recommend doing that. <laughs> but yes, no, it's, 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 there are accounts like that where they, they are able to find out as kind of as much information as possible about them and then kind of, you know, see where they're at and whatnot. And, and, you know, it, it everything that you people don't realize how much information they put on social media right so that's like another i think that's when it comes to the question of whether you have your personal profile as public or private because for me my personal profiles like on social media they're private but it's like when it comes to my branding that is only public so it's like Mm. you gotta figure out a way to differentiate right if you want if you want to keep your personal stuff towards only a few people then keep it private Mm. otherwise it's like for branding you're more than welcome to keep it um uh public yeah exactly i think it also comes to saying, like, don't forget whatever you put on social media, it's always going to be there. Right? There's always going to be a way to track it back. Yeah. That's why they always say, you know, be mindful of what you're saying, especially if you're like, if you have a business, if you're some sort of influencer, it's very important that on social media, like you act good, you act a certain way, because like if you act a certain way and it's, people don't like it, it's bad. <laughs> like nowadays the word is you can get canceled right but yeah or, yes, the, or the you can even lose culture. your job yes mm-hmm. right so i mean that's kind of crazy to think about and and while that that cancel culture and you know that canceled term you know can be for some positive things um uh and has you know done some positive things and and you know taken some people um to places i think uh it, it's 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 important to remember that um not everything that everyone does and says is on social media is an absolute reflection of what is happening in reality. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, if we're moving forward, I, I think this is a really beautiful point. Um, and it definitely jumps back into some of the positives we're, we're, we're really going back and forth here. And that's the entire theme of this presentation. I absolutely love it. So I, I really like this discussion. Um, yeah. I think let's talk a little bit about this and how, social media and certain groups can help and finding people through different platforms can help us battle the big, big thing, the big depression word. Right. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, no, I think um, because of social media and the way that you can form different groups, whether it's based on your interests or, you know, where where you attend university or things that you like, whether you know them or not. Right. Right it does become like a space where you can share your feelings and vent to people. And a lot of the times that even if they're not, you know, in the same country as you or near you in any way, they'll understand, understand what you're going through. And I think that's something, one of the really beautiful things about social media is that 
you'll always find someone um, who you're you're able to share your feelings with or talk with. Um, and that can definitely, definitely get through some, some rough days for people. And I know from, you know, speaking with people who have, for example, moved out to a different country and were completely isolated and alone in the beginning, um, being connected through social media and um, even meeting people on there who they've never even met on person, some of them have ended up being some of their closest friends. And that's because they've, they've been there with them through, through some tough moments. And I think it just goes to show that like friendships and relationships can be built, you know, in so many different ways nowadays. And um, if, if, if it's, if it's helping you, you know, get over something or helping you to kind of you know, deal with those emotions that you're unable to do deal with otherwise, then it's definitely a beautiful thing. Yeah, I love the um, the whole point. This is kind of going off what you're saying, Jasenia. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, you know how we're saying, you know, it can be therapeutic. I mean, let's just get down to, let's just get right down to it. There are platforms out there that were built during the pandemic um, that are available to teens that are online therapy for teens where you can book live sessions with life coaches and counselors who can help you with whatever you're going through. I know that um, BetterHelp, I don't know if anyone of you have seen the ads for that come up at all, but that's a great platform. Uh, It's very new that connects you to a counselor that's best suited for your needs and whatever you might be going through. Um, And you can sign up Um, you know, I think as long as you're kind of 18 or older, or if you're younger and you have a parent, you know, kind of do that for you. Um, it's, it's, it's a source of online therapy and you're one-on-one with a coach and these new ideas and things that are coming about recently are, they're just going to keep growing and evolving. And I'm really excited to see where it goes. So, so not only is, you know, something like running a page, like I, I know for myself, one of my, my best things that I love to do is whenever I go on an adventure, if I'm outside, you know, in nature doing something, I love to make a story and post it on my Instagram. That's like therapeutic for me. Right. And so we all, we have these like little moments in social media where we can be therapeutic and let little things like that go and showcase our creativity. And then we also have these like really great platforms. Now where we can actually talk to someone if we need to and unpack things with them. Right. So I absolutely, I love this idea. Yeah. And Anyone else have anything to add about that? I think what's really amazing too, is that it's not only for our generation or for teenagers, like, especially in the pandemic, a lot of seniors and long-term care homes, you know, have been able to connect and do those same things that um, they, they were doing before in person through through social media, whether it's, you know, they're, they're getting someone's help or um, counseling, therapy, all of those things. Um, because of course it is, it, it was isolating, especially for the older generation who don't have as much ease of use for social media and these things. But um, I think that's that's another thing that it's kind of transcended just outside of our age group to other other generations as well. Mm-hmm. The one thing I can add into this, like the way how you say when you go and you post something that when you're outside, for me, it's like whenever I do a review, I feel like that is really therapeutic because I feel like I'm like that's where all my creativity is right I'm explaining it the best way I could and then at the, at the end of the day whenever I get a response from a restaurant they're like oh thank you for sharing um our dish on your on your um on your blog or YouTube channel I feel like that's that's like something good because the other person is benefiting in there so that's the way how I see it mm-hmm. absolutely let's talk about um education and potential let's talk about these this is a this is a really great slide Jess did you have something to say about this yeah, for sure. So I think we kind of m- mentioned a little bit the, the mm-hmm. education before, but the way that, you know, we we're able to find out about so many different things, whether it's things that are happening socially, culturally, um, politically through social media is is really amazing that, you know, I'm able to learn about, for example, what's happening in a whole, di- a whole other continent and still feel still feel connected to that because I feel like at the end of the day, you know, it is a global community and it's important that we we do stay educated and aware um, on all of the different things that are going on. So social media has definitely helped me with that, especially if, you know, I'm, I'm not watching the news that day or I haven't been I haven't spoken to someone who who, who knows a lot about that stuff. I feel mm-hmm. like I can still go on an app, whether it's a news app or a social media app and still find out about those same things. And I think it's really amazing how social media has 
kind of create created this platform where people can educate others just like you were mentioning um with your you, that you teach ESL right that that wouldn't have been po- possible before so um it's kind of created this like mentor and mentee relationship between people um and then of course unleashes potential there's so many entrepreneurs dancers singers artists so you know across the world that have gain popularity through posting their videos on social media, whether it's a video on YouTube or even just a small clip, you know, that that has that has helped emerge some of the biggest names, whether it's Justin Bieber and Sean Mendez, you know, they've become A-list celebrities and household Mm -hmm. names now just because they were able to post their stuff on social media and many of them attribute their success there I even watched an interview and I think this was this was for One Direction and they were saying that without without social media we we really would be nowhere because and they've been able to garner this um you know such such a huge reach across the world and I think even more relevant is BTS the K-pop group for example they yes yes the K-pop group yeah yes yes people love them all over so it it really has you know and and again I think their main driving force was social media and people talking and posting about them so it's it's so interesting to me just like the whole concept of unleashing potential I feel like we could do an entire podcast on just unleashing potential maybe we should write that down and perhaps discuss that later but (laughs) I, I I it's it, it's it's such an interesting concept to me because it's like you know um you have all of these people who have grown on platforms recently this year who have literally started from scratch and within a year gone to like how we talked about in our last podcast which by the way if you haven't if you didn't see that one everyone it's on our social media so go check that out um it, it, unleashing potential yes absolutely and and no no greatness can come without a little bit of struggle I think that I definitely learned that throughout this year and throughout the pandemic and throughout that lockdown, right? And I think anybody who's grown on social media, any one of these artists that we've talked about today knows that without struggle, you cannot unleash your full potential. And that's such a a driving, motivating force that I have found to be super helpful and interesting throughout this time in my life personally so I could definitely go on and on about unleashing potential but for the sake of time (laughs) let's definitely uh, ask our next question so what are some of the ways that social media has negatively influenced you I know we've we've kind of touched on this um throughout uh, some points and I'll definitely touch on it a little bit more uh, if we get a chance to get into some of these slides but for myself it was a matter of I mentioned how I was getting into fitness and I had I had started to get into the comparison game and I saw that people were above me and had reached goals and were doing things at a far superior level than I was and I was instantly like why am I not there yet when I was on the up and up right So I think that's, I I recognize that now and I recognize I'm, you know, on an upwards trajectory and I'm working towards those things. And it's always a, this is a concept that I love. It's you versus you, not you versus them, right? You versus you. And I think, um, yeah, Ravinda, do you want to introduce me? Yeah, I don't know. Um, That's hundred percent correct. I think this is like the true negative side of social media is that we see these influencers these business people Uh, sometimes we even see people that are like you know our age like in 20 21 you know making millions of dollars and sometimes we think like man what are they doing that i can't do or like we see fitness people that are like you know 20 years old or 18 years old absolutely built like a machine and they're like man why can't i be like that right i think oh my gosh we can we've all seen the videos of that entrepreneur that is like 19 years old who's like I wake up at five in the morning, every morning, and I have my cup of coffee and my cold shower. I go on the stock market and I make $5,000 and that's my day. And it's like, you know, that's probably not right. Like that's, he's probably number one lying and trying to get your attention and trying to get you to buy a course. But exactly that, like I, I totally hear yeah, what you're saying, yeah. right? But but even even like, like you said, there are those people that are not doing the right thing. But you got to think there are people that do do it the right way sometimes, right? 
and they did become very successful and sometimes that makes you think like man like I wish I can be like that and that makes you compare yourself right when it comes to fitness I think especially being a guy or a man um especially nowadays since we have social media you're following fitness people and you're trying to work out and you're like man why can't I get to that level right so Carl like what you said it's 100% right it's you gotta say you know it's it's not about them or anybody else it's about me and you'll eventually get there too after you put in the work right so I think what a lot of us forget to do when we compare ourselves especially is to remember that those people that are on these platforms that are on these social medias they're actually doing more work than we know and we can see right because what they post on social media is just like the pretty, the glamour, but what we don't actually see like the day-to-day hustle, right? So I think that's my... Um... Like one thing I'm going to add is like for social media, when it, talks, when it comes to negative um, effects in there, that would be like, uh, for some reason, it's like, um, let's say your video gets like, um, let's say more than a thousand views, right? So on that, for some reason, people assume that you're actually making money off of youtube like from my perspective i'm still a new youtuber but the truth is it's like no there's there's a whole um like there's a whole uh, set of requirements for that and people just assume that right away and then it's like you have to explain to them no it's not what you think it is like yeah but the the thing that's in there the timing it takes to film and to upload it that doesn't mean that you're making money right away and one thing that i've seen is it's like that if you're from someone from another country they assume that because of the pandemic, because uh, there was CERB recently uh, that Canada had introduced during the time when the pandemic first started. So people assume that, okay, that over here, that we're all earning um, just like that. When the truth is, no, there's, there's only uh, frontline workers or there was only a um, few certain types of workers that were earning money, not everyone. So it's like perception, it matters a lot in there. That's one of the negative things. Because people, because yeah. for most, of the time when I've noticed is people assume that you make money out of everything. Like, yes, that is good. In some cases you do, but not in every case you do. Yeah. Perception yeah. And, and showcasing uh, wealth, right. Especially at a young age where, you know, you're, you're still figuring out what you want to do in life and, and figuring out where life is going to take you. Right. It should be what, mo- what should be motivating you and, and your driving force when you're young. And I feel like in your twenties is, uh, figuring out what you enjoy and what makes you happy and, and not so much. Yes, of course, getting your wealth up with that along, right? Or if you do, I'm sure you will say that. But yeah. at the same time, remembering the perception of it all and, exactly. and what is actually making you happy as an individual as well. Yeah. One, one more thing I want to add in there. First of all, if anybody in the Facebook Live wants to add in their ideas, feel free to add that and we'll you know share that with everyone. Uh, one more thing I want to add is I think it's a real time killer, right? I think, you know, nowadays everything's on our phone. Sometimes you're on your phone, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and, you know, three, four hours will be gone. Like, have you guys noticed that? Yeah. And it, oh my gosh. Yes. It's, it's <laughs> crazy when you think about it. It's like, man, I'm spending so much time True. And at it could home affect your doing eyesight. nothing, right? It could affect especially, your eyesight. especially nowadays, um, you know, when I was a kid, when I was in like junior high and elementary, we were all outside playing like basketball and sports and stuff. Mm-hmm. And nowadays, even before the pandemic, I remember driving around in my basketball court near my house and there's no kids. Right. And it's like because most people, they're connected through the Internet. And it's I feel like that's it's good, but it's also negative because people don't know how to actually have a real conversation with somebody in person. Have you guys noticed that? Like some people are really awkward when it comes to that I've noticed that that's actually happened media. to me it's actually happened to me from a number of times it's like on social media it's like you're talking everything when you see the person in person it's different yeah yeah 100 yeah. percent. yeah sometimes the people and, that are like you know really out there in social media in person they're they're very shy and it's hard to think it's it's the same person right so I think that's that's a really bad part of social media but you know. Like even on Zoom, like most of the people I met on Zoom, like I met some um, from there that I met them in person now. But it's like I don't know. It's like I still don't know how to look like in person. So it's still the same thing even on Zoom. And also on top of that, like yeah, it, it affects your eyesight a lot because for like for someone who's spending like four hours in there, it's like when you actually you will actually be recommended to get glasses sometime soon because of the way how your eyes are off is on on the screen. So that's one of the effects in there. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if we're talking about the physical and mental aspects of 
how it can negatively impact someone. Great points. Um, I think that it's it's this image in the top left corner of the presentation here is kind of a perfect example of, I mean, how many times do we look in the mirror every single day and, you know, try to take a picture for our Snapchat or our Instagram, or if we're sending it to our friends and make sure that we've got the right filter on the right lighting. I mean, you know, I'm subject to it. I, I say that I have a ring light for work, but I love the way it brings out my face on zoom during my lectures for Queens university. Like we do, we do this. This is, this is natural human behavior. Right. I mean, this is just kind of um, <clears throat> it, it can definitely raise your self-esteem, but also lower it. Right. And, and what if we're not at our best that day and we can't present ourselves in 100 percent of our our best fashion? Um, so, that you know, the, the whole concept of virtual versus reality. Right. What we post is not what we are always like. Just like you said, Ravindu, there are people who are super you know, into the social media and who always look great on it and amazing. And then, you know, meeting them in real life, perhaps it's a bit dull. And I, I think that that's it's a combination of, of multiple issues. And I don't want to make any like generalized statements, of course. Um, but <clears throat> these are real issues that, you know, the body image issues is definitely a real thing when all we see are these perfect people on social media all the time, the low self-esteem and like, bringing that down for people, um, can cause real issues and real mental struggles like depression and anxiety. Um, One thing and, I've noticed with social media, there's a thing of, there's also a thing with uh, depression, and anxiety is one other thing to mention is that often, like, I get messages to delete my photo, and I don't get the reason for it. And I'm like, I and then I feel like pressurized on that. Okay, why are you telling me the reason if there's no reason for me to delete the photo? I've noticed it a lot. Like this actually happened to me a couple of times. And hmm. still, my question is now, okay, if you're saying me to delete a picture when I have a, when I just took that picture because I like it, I just want to post it up. Let's say if I go to downtown, I, I have a picture of myself, right? And on that, I get told, because I feel like people have some kind of a inferiority in there that, okay, why am I having to do this? Well, first of all, it depends on, on the kind of person you are, right? With me, I love to put up at least 100 pictures of wherever I go. I know people who only post up like one or two pictures because they're not that they're not that uh, open on social media. On top of that, but when, there's, but when people approach you and say, okay, delete that photo and they don't give you a reason, I feel like that is something to do with, uh, with uh, them instead of um versus me the you versus you thing in there i've noticed it a lot right well yeah I, th I think you're right it also depends on you know the guidelines of uh the application or you know kind of whatever it is and and that's your account right honey that's your hanya travels account that's what you do yeah right? i've literally gotten messages like that so many times and i'm like okay give me one reason why i should leave my picture <sighs> if it has nothing to do with you i post it up because i like it it's not because of you i post it mm -hmm. i think that's yeah you guys that's like what you said is 100% correct the social media gives people that like you know that feeling to judge someone and not really to kind of have a like something happen to them because it's all over the internet right and sometimes people put on that fake mask or like that picture on the right side so it's it's crazy how I think nowadays that social media is such a good thing but it's also affecting us too affecting a lot of the younger generation um i think nowadays because of these stuff like tiktok and instagram and these things i think we have a short attention span like especially me like i remember we talked about right. watching a movie right and we can't even get through the movie without trying to skip through it right or like, right we try to go somewhere and we want to get there quick it's like why is that it's because of everything in our life it's it's right there it's it's really quick yeah information and, at your fingertips right Ravindu it's like yeah, you know you get that instant 100%. gratification when you have a question and you go on Google simply type it in you've got an answer and the same thing with this TikTok exactly what we're saying it like attention span it's just uh does this interest me in like less than five seconds nope okay I think I'm going to continue scrolling on right so exactly. it's like that like no wonder people are like so ecstatic and like super happy and like everyone's trying to put on their best you know face if for those like five seconds that they have you right on your on your screen right yeah. it's 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 so interesting to me because if you think about how much time we spent like just on social media in general, it, it's, it's insane. We'll get into that in a bit. I, I want to take over here just with some of these unhealthy comparisons. And we talked a little bit about this earlier, but it, it goes into saying here that humans have been comparing themselves since the dawn of time. And it's true, I think, right? Like we're always trying to be the biggest, the strongest, the best, the most attractive, whatever it may be. And social media is like this new way to like bring this out. 
right? I mean, I've fallen subject to this, like it happens, right? Except now it's happening at an unprecedented scale. And uh, so I think it's a, it's a conversation that can translate into, okay, how can we cope? How can we, how can we deal with these things? Um, and recognize that they are things and not just kind of push them off to the side and then keep posting, right? And I think it's a matter of simply recognizing it, simply recognizing that these patterns exist and that they're there. I think a good way to do that is to limit your scroll time. I mean, if we think about how much time we spend swiping a piece of glass daily, it's like it's it's, it's crazy. quite literally a piece of glass right yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean if you think about it like that right and then also be careful who you follow on social media follow people right. and it, i mean this is be careful about who you follow in life i'd say is is advice that i've always heard be with people and surround yourself with people who are going to constantly lift you up but also be real with you and want to push you forward right You're, you you don't have to ha- agree hundred percent with your friends all the time. You need someone who's going to push you or tell you or call you out on something that, that you need calling <clears throat> out on. Right. Um, Carlo, so, I want to mention one thing. Yeah. What you said, it reminded me of something. Um, especially, I know we talked about social media for us, but have you guys noticed social media when it comes to like babies, especially YouTube? Um, this is one thing I noticed is hmm. a lot of parents nowadays when they get kind of, you know, tired or frustrated of, their kid what do they do they put on youtube and put that in front of their kid and when it really comes to like that you know the mental aspect of it like the brain it's it's kind of crazy how it affects these a lot of these younger kids because they grew up with a phone in front of their face oh my gosh because they yeah. grew up mm-hmm. with a screen in front of their face and you know it's it's sad to say that it happens but that's a reality right and how do you think that affects these kids like these babies and how do you think it will affect their future when it comes to you know their time i mean just get, just from guessing I, i'm assuming that it ends up having them build an emotional attachment to a device like a tablet or a computer right yeah. and i think in my generation we didn't quite have this stuff when i was younger 100%. we had like our versions of it so i'm not like you know, attached to any of these things. I mean, I, 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 I'm saying that and I'm hearing myself say that and I'm literally wearing an Apple watch and I'm like, Hmm, am I though? Am I not attached to it? I'm not sure. But I think it's, it's the difference of being like attached and, and having a necessary, you know, use for it. And then the emotional attachment to it. And like that thing, like the example you brought up, like the parents putting their kids in front of the tablet or the laptop or the TV and having YouTube or whatever it is put on, they're building an emotional attachment to that. They're getting used to that behavior. Yeah. So it's and interesting. It, it's, it's almost like YouTube is parenting your kid instead of, you know, the parent doing it because they're watching all these shows. Haven't you guys mm-hmm. thought about that? It's, it's kind of really crazy that these people that oh, younger are making- cousins, I've really seen this happen. Like, it's like, <laughs> um, my aunt just gives them the, uh, the tablet and they're just like watching throughout and then after that they don't make a noise and it's like when they need to eat then just like put it away and eat i've literally like noticed that with my younger cousins yeah 100 percent. i think i think it's a very fine line and, and it's hard for parents too to kind of make that determination you know how much will i expose my kid to social media because at the end of the day, they will grow up with it even more than us. It's going to be inevitable, right? At a certain point, they'll have to be on it for some purpose or another. But at the same time, you know, make sure that they are still a kid and you're still parenting them how you normally would. So I think I think it, it, it adds definitely another layer of difficulty to, to a parent's job because right. there's so much going on these days too. Sometimes the easy option is to just, you know, play play their favorite show in front of them for hours on end and then you can go and finally have some peace to yourself i've seen it so many times but yeah, you, you can make dinner or cook or, you <laughs> know like do what you have to do as a parent which is like totally fine like that's 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 okay i'm just i think we're just wondering what what would happen you know, over the time side effects, right? right yes like yeah. as a behavior yeah of that uh, i think yeah but due to what i remember reading in social sciences is that if you give your child at an early age the um the tablet or anything they're eventually going to develop a, a habit of using that all the time which will actually you won't have so much of a parent-child bonding in that reason because no because because the app is going to be in there it's going to it's going to affect that 
and that right. and that also affects marriages as well. Like when you bring in a lot of social media usage in there, it affects parent child relationship, but it also affects marriages. That's one thing I read. Oh, that's very interesting. One thing I want to mention too is um <clears throat> when it comes to using social media and like kind of like the negative aspect, I think I noticed this is because of social media, some most of us nowadays are very bad at making conversation when we are in a setting at like a restaurant. If you notice, like even when we're sitting with our friends, we're always like checking our phone, taking Snapchats. We're never in the moment, right? Yeah. It's, it's crazy to think about that. And it really is sad. It's affecting us in that way. I mean, there's always that good and negative. I recently went to a restaurant where you need to put your QR code to get the menu. So I've seen yeah, that yeah. the whole drip through social media and restaurants as well. It's like, it's like everything is just on the phone now in there. Well, there's even some restaurants that actually they say, I was, I was, I saw the one the other day. They said we don't offer Wi-Fi, so that's our way of like getting you guys off your phone. So <laughs> yeah. interesting, yeah. I'll, I'll mention these. Um, what are some ways to control the use of social media? I think I put this slide up, and I think it's very important. Um, you can practice this yourself. I think we can practice this ourselves, and obviously, if you have kids, you can practice this. Um, one of the things that that you can do is you can change the not notification setting right so for example let's say um you get a lot of instagram notifications maybe for a certain period of time like when you're out with your friends you can turn that off so that way you don't get any notifications and you're there in the moment right yeah. or you can monitor your app usage have you guys ever checked the battery level like usage of how much screen time you're on yeah it's like yeah sometimes it's like eight hours a day it's like oh my god it's like working a full-time job right yeah. I do have the reports come up quite often on, on both my watch and my phone. And I try to limit it, but when you're, I find, I mean, um, I find when you're typing out assignments quite often, that can be challenging to limit your screen time because you're yeah. typing out these essays for long periods of time. Right. It's, it's something to look out for, for sure. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then one thing that I put in here is too, is don't sleep with your device. Right. I think this is, this is a really good one, especially sometimes for me, if, I tend to look at my phone before bed. I feel like when I wake up, I feel more tired, right? But if I like sleep away from my phone and take 20 minutes beforehand, just do nothing and just be there with myself. When I wake up, I feel like I have a lot more energy. Do you guys ever feel like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm in a really bad habit right now, Ravindu, of sleeping with my phone next to my yeah. bedside table. And I've definitely got to change that. I've got to like put it on a charger far away in the next room. So I'm not tempted to grab it or reach it by any means, right? That, that's another thing, right? It's it's our it's my alarm, right? So I, I kind that's of need it thing, in yeah. my room. So yeah. they've kind what, of what? so many ways that they've they've made it so that you're always attached to it no matter always what. on it. Yeah, that happens right, yeah. to me too. But it's like I feel like that for for me, it's like digital detox is unnecessary. Like it's like you gotta move yourself away from the phone. Like when my when my battery is literally like 15 percent or 20 percent i just like leave it up i just like let it charge for two hours and two hours i don't touch my phone that's what absolutely. i absolutely yeah i'm just to kind of cover some of the stuff i know we're a minute over time but um it's well documented people are spending more time on social media than ever right globally it says we're on it for 145 minutes a day so that's that's you know quite a bit of time and um you know, uh, this goes back to the comparison, you know, it's, it's proved a lifeline for many during the pandemic, but we've got to get careful not to get sucked into that you versus them mentality, right? Seeing someone and uh, TikTok, this is a reference to TikTok, I feel like, but doing an imaginary dance off with them, like duetting them or something <laughs> like that and comparing them to your, to yourself, right? Um, uh, some, some cool information here, information about human nature, um, I have recently ran into some work of Rebecca Sparks, uh, who is a psychotherapist for my program that I'm in. And she talks a lot about human nature and the brain and how it, uh, you know, how we are naturally wanting and we have a natural inclination to compare ourselves as human beings. And it's, it's actually related to this primitive way of keeping ourselves safe. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to say this is such a great discussion. I feel like we could just kind of go on and on about so many of these of these yeah. topics. And it's I feel like it's more important than ever to kind of talk about these things, um, you know, just kind of coming out of this <laughs> this lockdown stage, not really knowing what's going to happen next. And we'll, we'll see the use of social media go up. We'll see it go down. I'm not I'm not too sure. Um 
I, I think that just recognizing some, a lot of the things that we talked about throughout this, this show today is super important in terms of dealing with it um, and dealing with those positive and negative aspects of social media. So great conversation, everyone. I, I really enjoyed it. It's definitely going to make me think about some stuff that I'm doing right now and how to improve 100%. that too. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, Thanks, guys. <laughs> tuning in and you know coming with us again today and Tuesday as well this was our first week of episodes and we really hope you enjoyed and if you did you know we'd love to see you again next Tuesday at our next episode we will be running for the next 12 weeks on Tuesday and Thursday so please be sure to tune in and share it with your friends as well Um, if you have any comments suggestions for any topics that you'd like to hear from us in the future please shoot us a DM or a message or you can email us as well and we'd be happy to respond. And, you know, we would love to take any any feedback or advice that you would give us. So thank you so much for all the comments. Thank you for engaging with us and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Okay, we should be done now. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see it there? Yeah, we're we're golden. Let me see here. Okay, amazing. Okay, we're live. Yep. All right. Well, <clears throat> hello and welcome to our, our very first session. Um, my name's Carlo Joseph Bianchini. I'm Ravindu. I'm yeah, so today our topic of conversation is going to be the growth of social media. So we're going to be talking about some of our favorite platforms that we've been using currently in 2021, how those are evolving and changing and continuing in different ways um, that we've seen over the pandemic. Um, and I think you might find a lot of this information very, very interesting. So for those that are here early, um, to those that are here now, if you have any questions at any time, um, just go ahead and, and post that in the chat. Um, so yeah, getting excited to talk about some artists first off. But before we do that, hi, Jacenia. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How's it going? Good, how are you? Do we want to talk a little bit about ourselves and, and just kind of introduce ourselves? I, I can go first. Yeah, so go yeah, first. As I said, I'm Carlo Bianchini, um, and I am a actor, singer, artist. I graduated from Sheridan College in 2019, um, and I'm currently pursuing my education degree at Queen's University. So that's um, you know happening right now, mixture of online classes and in-person classes. So yeah, I'll pass it off to you, uh, Ravindu. Go ahead. Yeah, my name is uh, Vindu, and um, I'm pretty much in business right now. And then I've been doing marketing and social media on the side as well. So this is a great opportunity for me to share my thoughts with you guys and uh, learn as well from all the others, other speakers we have today. Amazing. Hi, everyone. I'm Jasenia. I'm also one of the co-hosts for this session and so excited to be with you all. Um, I'm in my third year uh, of commerce at Queen's University. So similar to Carlo, also a mixture of online and in-person classes. So super excited about this series. You know, we have some really interesting topics coming up the next few weeks. And yeah, I think this topic in particular, um, the youth who are watching will, will take a lot out of, and I'm sure they can relate to it as well. So please engage, ask questions. If there's anything else, you know, you'd like us to discuss in future se- sessions, then definitely let us know. So yeah, that's a little bit about me and I'll uh, pass it to Hania now. Hi, thank you, Yusenia. So my name is Hania and I'm a blogger and YouTuber as well. Um, I'm currently a Second City student and I'm also um, in the city of Brampton pageants for 2022. So I just thought I'd share. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, one more thing, guys. If you if you guys want to get involved with a youth program with Moksha Canada, um, there will be some links in our page where you guys can uh, sign up and get involved and you know join our community and you know help us in the future to grow. And with that, we can get started. 
uh, who's oh, starting wait. first, Carlos? Yes. Well, so we, think- we actually have a question to start off first. And, and the question that we're going to be focusing on today is how has social media affected your choices and preferences? Now, I know for myself, I definitely spent a lot more time on social media over the pandemic. Uh, I think apps like TikTok, at first I was a little bit hesitant on downloading um, because I thought it might have been for those younger generations. But as I got into it and gave it a try, I definitely see the positive aspects of it. Um, And that's another topic for another day too, positive and negative aspects of social media. But um, it's definitely given me, um, let's talk about the For You page, right? So the For You page is so specifically designed to what you want to see and what you want to pay attention to. So if you want to fill that up and fill your time with motivating, driving positive things on your For You page, that can actually be really, really beneficial and really, really healthy for you. Um, so I have found this to be my TikTok, you know, aside from the small moments of comedic relief, of course, that are in there. Um, it's a great place for artists. It's a great place for those who love fitness and love to um, motivate others to do that. Um, it's a great place to find recipes. There are so many things that you can find on TikTok. Um, and that's just one of the apps that we're going to talk about today. Um, and I, I found that it's really influenced a lot of my choices um, moving forward throughout this year. One, one in particular was I was inspired by this challenge that I saw for the first time on TikTok called 75 Hard. I don't know if have any of you guys heard of this before. Yeah. Yeah. No, I yeah. Not. Okay, so this is a very interesting challenge that was going viral on TikTok for quite some time. So 75 Hard is a mental toughness and workout program that was designed by Andy Frizzola. And he has some really great works and, and books and, and things out. And you guys should definitely check him out. But essentially what it is, is it's two 45 minute workouts a day. And one of them has to be outside. And that's just the basis of it. There are other things to it, such as cold showers or reading 10 pages of a, a nonfiction book every day something more along your lines we're going to do like entrepreneurial that kind of yeah. stuff yeah um waking up I, early sleeping early all of that yes stuff. yes yeah. and and it's it's all about building good habits um and i completed that this summer and it's because of something i saw on tiktok um, that's crazy. yeah so um yeah i feel like it's all about um what's specifically designed to come up on your for you page and how you interact with those videos if any yeah, of you guys want to interject and that's a mm-hmm. good way how to keep yourself mentally and physically fit absolutely yeah, you know, yeah. I, I think it's you know really like transcended all boundaries tiktok is something that as we can see um a lot of the other social media pages like instagram reels and youtube they're all kind of taking inspiration from it because of how it really just skyrocketed in fame during covid so i think from you know dressing styles and the music we listen to and what's on the radio it's all influenced by them and um I can say definitely for for me like the you know choices and preferences is a a huge thing I I follow a bunch of like fashion bloggers who post their outfits on there um, a bunch of people who do cooking recipes and you know really help, help to keep me like on the right track through quarantine giving like simple and easy recipes that were also healthy. So um, it's kind of like your one-stop shop for a multitude of things. And everyone, no matter your age or your interests can find um, can find something that they like on, on social media. And I think we'll, we'll go into it more, but how you can really grow your own personal brand and your business to it through it as well. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be covering that too. Yeah, this, those are some great points. Um, I also wanted to say, I think, uh, for us, we actually grew up with social media, right? So it's, you know, crazy to see that nowadays, like almost every single business in the world is pretty much using social media. And if you're not as a business or as an influencer, you're kind of way, you know, behind the curve. So I think social media, it just became like something like just before it was more like, you know, a messaging app, something like that. Now it's becoming more like, you know, a business somewhere you can grow your influencers. It's, I mean, the possibilities of it is crazy, especially with COVID, as you guys know, um, as everyone being home, I think it gave a lot of opportunity to these social media companies and those people that are really, 
you know, taking advantage of social media, their businesses actually grew more, right? Because more people started using TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and they tend to use it more, right? So, I mean, social media, like, if you really master this, uh, number one, I think you can make a lot of money. You can help a lot of people. Pretty much you can do anything. You can create a community with people around the world that you could have never met before, right? I agree. Mm-hmm. Most of the programs I ever I found throughout this year and most of the trainings I've been to, it's all kind of social media. It's like my resource. And other than that, it's like for my own, like for my personal branding, it's like if you wanna if you wanna get people to know you, you have to use social media as a tool. So I agree with that. And even for I like I often see wild recipes on TikTok. And when I see those, I'm actually eager to try them myself. So it's like it whatever you should try something different, it, it lets you it influences your choices like in, in the very simplest form. So it's like, you don't notice it, but it's like social media has a lot of effect in our daily lives. Yeah. Well, one, one, one more thing I want to add on is, uh, is before it's like, if you don't know something and you didn't have social media, it's really hard for you to figure it out. But now, like, let, for example, let's say you, you want to figure out how to make a website, but like you can use social media to your advantage to learn these things. It's kind of cool how we're going from that, you know, traditional, like read a book, to now kind of like, okay, we can do from online learning, you know, virtually, you know, YouTube and all these other platforms. I think that's another great thing of social media and these different platforms we have. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, great, great points, everyone. And I think a, a huge takeaway from that is the fact that over this pandemic, here we have this multitude of apps, this huge social media um entity in our lives now, right? And nothing but endless scrolling and endless videos. And so how can you as an artist, as an entrepreneur, as an individual represent yourself in the best way possible so that you get noticed because everybody wants to be an influencer nowadays. Everybody wants to have that Instagram account at 10K. Everybody wants to have TikTok uh, viewers and followers, right? Like everybody wants to do that, but how can you kind of stand out? So we'll also touch on some of those things today. Um, so good to move on everyone, I think, right? I think that's a nice little touch yeah. on that, on that topic. And we can always circle back to it, which I'm sure that we will. Um, yeah, absolutely. And we have, we have the live chat going, so I'm monitoring the chat as well. So great. if anyone from our audience wants to, you know, put in any of their comments as well, please feel free. We'd love to read them out. Perfect. Perfect. So I'll interject here for a bit. Um, I definitely wanted to talk about how I noticed Um, artists using sounds on TikTok. So TikTok is great because not only is it a new app that has the potential to make any video go viral, right? I think a big takeaway for TikTok um, for me this year was finding out um, some of my favorite artists and some of my favorite songs through the use of when people were using it on their videos. I said, oh, I really like that, you know, 15 second clip of that song that I heard. I'm going to look this artist up. And that's how I got into a majority of my playlists on Spotify. So I think let's touch on some of the bigger artists here, right? So we can't ignore Megan Stallion. We cannot ignore that. I think it was on, or it must have been on everybody's For You page at some point, right? The Savage Dance, the Savage Song. This was um, the song for quite some time. Uh, I won't do the dance for you because I cannot do it. But <laughs> if anyone can, please, uh, please feel free. And anyone in the chat, if they want to comment. Stay tuned uh, for our next episode where we yeah. have dance. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, here we have this amazing um, uh, female artist. But not only that, she's a Black female artist that that is in the height of um, when everything was going on for Black Lives Matter, coming up with this amazing song that people are, are you know, absolutely going bonkers for on TikTok. It was 27.6 million TikTok videos and, and growing, right, using that song. Um, and this is a good, a good indicator of how TikTok works as a platform that can promote artists. Um, So if we're thinking about logistics of just trying to grow your own, you know, personal brand as an artist, for example, or even just as a influencer, sounds are a great way to do that. Even circling back to when I was looking at fitness or motivational style videos for the 75 hard program, 
I would see these sounds being used by multiple people in that industry, even trying to grow and grow and grow by using the popular sounds that some of the larger accounts were doing or even mentioning them. Um, and a lot of people that did these videos to this song gained traction. So there's so many different pathways. And I just, I absolutely had to touch on Megan Thee Stallion um, because I thought that that was definitely one of the videos that I saw coming up on my For You page quite often. Next, we cannot ignore Olivia Rodrigo. Um, perhaps a little bit more recent, I still probably play Good For You every single day at the gym. And <laughs> she's probably one of my new uh, absolute favorite artists that, again, I would not have heard if it wasn't for TikTok. I mean, if we take a look at some of her stats when she first started out, um, Driver's License was a song that really kind of helped her gain traction um, and people liked her then. And then uh, Good For You came out and everybody was like, whoa, this is absolutely like crazy. Like she just kind of switched gears like a hundred percent and just, and became the latest TikTok, TikTok obsession. Everybody was dancing to Olivia Rodrigo. And I don't know about if you guys want to speak to it at all, but I, I absolutely love her, her newest album. You know, there's kind of some hints towards the, the love triangle and, and her and her ex. And, you know, that's kind of another thing that you can do when you get involved in some of these <laughs> artists and creators lives is lives is kind of get involved in that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, it, it's it's simply um, uh, it's very easy to discover the latest hits on your TikTok for you page. And that's yeah. because the, it's like you're interacting with a group of friends that are on your phone that like the same stuff as you. So you're scrolling and you're like, oh, that interests me. Like then the algorithm goes, OK, I see that. I'm going to take that information to you and show it to you in 100 different ways. Right. And from a hundred different people. So I, I couldn't not talk about Olivia Rodrigo. Mm -hmm. Doja Cat coming in with 263 million views from her, from her YouTube videos because of the dancing trend that went on from people using the sound on TikTok. So <clears throat> this one is a really interesting example because here we have multi-platform, cross-platform connections for artists. So you got a snippet of the song on TikTok. People did a dance to it. People knew that song very, very well. Say So was very, very popular um, just a little while ago, especially during, like it says here, the early days of quarantine. And so people were going to TikTok, using her sound, doing the dance, transitioning over to YouTube and getting that 263 million views on Say So on YouTube which is just, um, that's, 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 that's a goal as an artist, right? To have your, your yeah. video not only hit a million views, but 263 million views, that's, that's unheard of. Um, and again, because of something that happened on TikTok, this new growing platform. So another one a, that we have to mention. Oh yeah, go ahead, Ravindu. Yeah, I have a, I have a question to add there. Mm -hmm. is, um, do you think that TikTok is like, because back then, before TikTok, artists just yeah. post their music on, you know, YouTube, Spotify, and other music platforms. But I think now, because of TikTok and all these different dances, do you think artists are making music that are, like, more, like, catchy, more, like, you know, vibe, more, like, you know, dancey and stuff like that? I think if you look at it, the artists, that's what the culture is kind of moving to now, right? I think it also gives an opportunity for, like, upcoming artists if they want to become really big they have to get on tiktok and you know make those catchy songs and they get that I possibility really blow up yeah i remember before tiktok there was wines and due to what i know sean mendes became famous because of his wines and now it's like tiktok is like is like a uh, more newer and more technical and a better platform for artists so the way i see it is like how we're getting new artists to come up now in the media it's because of the way how tiktok strategy is as compared to the artists that were using youtube and wines that were like i think they were five six years ago as compared exactly. to the apps now it, yeah that's a, that's a great story go ahead no sorry go ahead no you go for it Oh, sorry. Okay. So I was just going to say, that's a great example, Hania, that, you know, Sean Mendez really, he blew up um, into the stardom because of 
these six second vines he was posting. And now, you know, you're able to post up to three minutes on um, on TikTok. So um, there's so many new artists that I've seen on there that really, and even a friend of mine actually who makes music was telling me that instead of, you know, making music or thinking about what I think people would like to hear, I'm thinking about um, what's a song that someone could do a dance to or a TikTok dance to, right? Yeah. So I, I think to answer your question, definitely that people are kind of, looking at things a different way and um you know they know that all of these dances have been going viral and from really small artists too so so it could be anyone yeah i don't know if do you guys i don't know if you guys know this artist but i think it's uh it was a song called like jill, jill baby or something like that he made uh -huh. a song with usher he yeah, was pretty yeah. much like a nobody before and then out of nowhere now he's like you know his song reached really high i think millions of views and as an artist or like a singer, it gives you a really good opportunity to blow up your music, right? I think that's the power of social media and TikTok. Yeah, it's so interesting you guys are, are bringing this up on um, the Lewis Capaldi slide too, because absolutely artists are trying to transition some of their music and some of their songs to hit those targeted audiences on TikTok. And Louis Capaldi is kind of the perfect example of that because we all kind of knew who he was before, right? We all kind of uh, enjoyed his music, enjoyed his songs, and he had 10 million views on his YouTube uh, platform. You know, that's nothing small, right? But it wasn't until um, his TikTok uh, trend came about that his fame grew from 10 million to 309 million views. So here we have another example of some of an artist using this platform to gain even more traction onto his music and his and his style because of i mean really what's interesting about it is that people like us regular posters and interacting and people who are interacting with tiktok are doing the work for him right we're interacting with his music and his sounds on tiktok and we're posting it and we're doing the trends and he's just gaining bigger traction to it more and more and more and more and more so TikTok just drastically elevated the fame of artists who already had a platform and so so we have like two different sides of the spectrums here we have artists who are brand new to um to the, the to the music world putting out content for the first time and just gaining traction and, and going viral and then we have artists who have already kind of had a platform and continue to grow because of because of TikTok. So absolutely, um, everyone, they, they're absolutely targeting and trying to go after certain trends. And I'm personally really interested to see what the new Drake album is going to bring uh, for um, any kind of TikTok trends that come out. I've had a chance to listen to a little bit of it myself. Um, it's very, I think, I think it's a little different than what I'm used to hearing from him. So I'm interested to see what's going to come out of that album. And if anything's going to surface on TikTok or if a trend's going to start, because you never know with, with songs, it, it could take maybe, you know, a month or two for something to settle in. And then all of a sudden the trend will start coming up with that sound. So you never know. Um, or perhaps we'll see someone new. So, yeah, we see so many times where, you know, a really old song resurfaces with some type of um, new dance, <laughs> remix or new dance. So um, I think even for even for Savage, I think it even it came out like a year before it yes. blew up on TikTok. So you know it was there the whole time, but I I only knew it came. I thought it came out in March 2020, but it only came to my attention afterwards that oh, it's been out for so long. Um, but yeah, sometimes it, it does take, I guess, everything, everything takes its rounds, right? And then there's always something new at the same time. So, and I, I'm sure we'll, we'll get into the algorithm, but th they definitely know what they're doing on, on that end. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, a great point because it's like, imagine being that artist or that, even just that friend that said, I used to listen to her before she went famous because of yeah. the TikTok videos or the virals, right? So that's why it's, it's really good if I'll just throw in a little, um, a little side note in there. I do Radar Canada on Spotify. I don't know if you guys have ever checked out that playlist on Spotify, but it's like up and coming Canadian artists on Spotify. So every now and then I'll take a break from my regular playlist that I'm creating and I'll just kind of listen through that. And it's really interesting to see um, those transition into songs or hits that kind of 
end up going viral or like mini viral or just kind of doing well. So um, that's a little thing I'll throw in there too. Um, but any, anyways, moving forward, let's kind of open up a conversation throughout that and talk about these A-list celebrities. So if anyone wants to interject on this, I'm very, very happy to talk about this. I think it's a really interesting phenomenon that we have going on here. Definitely. Yeah, no, I guess I could give a little bit of a background to, you know, the people we see on the screen at least. So, you know, basically what we what we came to notice when we were brainstorming is that so many, um, so many normal people, everyday people who were in high school or university have all of a sudden transformed into the A-list celebrities. And I think a great example, yeah, last night the, the Met Gala was going on. And that's where um, all of the biggest, I guess, influencers, really celebrities, it's, it's, a, it's an exclusive event and you're only invited if you've really made it to that stardom phase. Um, and what was interesting to that um, event la last night was that there were so many people from YouTube and TikTok that were there and some people on social media were even questioning saying, oh, wow, like, for example, who we see in the top left corner, Addison Rae's only been popular for a year or so. How all of a sudden is she invited to this event where there's Rihanna and Kim Kardashian and all of these people that have been in the industry for years? But I think it really just goes to show that um, the power of social media can really take someone from, I know Addison Rae was just a normal uh, college going girl or she was about to start and then all of a sudden, after posting some, you know, dances and um, also I'm sure that the algorithm was in her favor and she used a lot of sounds and trends that were popular. Um, she, she's, you know, blown up into this mega celebrity star now who recently also just started in, in a movie as well. And to talk about uh, right underneath her, the, the D'Amelio sisters, Dixie and Charlie D'Amelio, they, they also started as just average girls in America. And then all of a sudden, um, through especially Charlie's dances, um, you know, they've also sky skyrocketed. And I believe now they're starting their own um, reality TV series. And then Logan Paul and his brother Jake, they're, they're also doing now they're fighting these boxers who, you know, it used to be really exclusive, and it only used to be for the best of the best, you would think. But um, there's a huge transition, I think, from um, social media into the A-list celebrity realm. And yeah, if you, if anyone else wants to expand on that, please. Yeah. I think, um, like you said, it gives an opportunity for pretty much anybody living at home with internet and a phone or a computer to become a celebrity, right? It's like almost, if you're very creative, like you, you, you can entertain people, you have a chance of blowing up because of these social medias i think it's really crazy like if you look at um uh, bella right there right um she she just did like the face stuff correct and then from oh, that we should she, probably say sorry we should probably say it's underneath uh bella porch is underneath us on the camera I don't oh know if yeah you can see it on the live stream but that is bella porch right just underneath us <laughs> yeah so bella porch is there um she, you know she did did the face stuff but from doing that she created like a hit song right and it's it's crazy because these you know everyday people if like they blow up from one video they go from you know blowing up in a video they start making you know being in movies making music so nowadays it's like hollywood can almost be in front of you on your phone if you really think about it right be before if you wanted to be an actor you got to go to hollywood you got to go to some movie studio you know you got to really take it there but nowadays if you really kind of are growing on social media, you have the opportunity to kind of be like that. So that's my Absolutely. thought. Absolutely. I agree. And it's like the networking that you do on social media, it's like that's what's getting all these influencers into Hollywood too, right? Because mm -hmm. think about it, if they have like 10K followers and let's say if a celebrity approaches them, maybe one or two, or maybe more than that, then they're right in Hollywood. So it's like, you don't need any audition. You could just get in there depending on uh, your followers and engagement and all these things. Yeah, 100%. I mean, can we just talk about the fact that one of these YouTubers literally fought a world champion professional boxer, Floyd yeah. Mayweather? I mean, when have you, and it was one of the most watched, most viewed fights ever, right? People are paying so much money for these YouTubers to fight a professional boxer. I mean, how many people are going to get the opportunity not only to do that and to make 
you know, millions just off the fight. Right. But like to even be in the same arena as someone to the, to the, as the, as the same stats as Floyd Mayweather. Right. Um, so, you know, Jake Paul and, and Logan Paul, they've, they're certainly kind of coming up on the, the boxing front. And I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what's going to happen with, uh, with that. Um, and then, you know, we, we can also touch on the D'Amelios, of course, who are famous for their, their dancing TikToks and, and just they're amazing dancers and they've gained so much traction and that's kind of just how it happens, right? It, it's, it's interesting to see what, uh, what people like and what people enjoy, but people like watching these YouTubers and social media stars box too, it seems like. So that's very interesting. That's kind of a trend coming up <laughs> um, in, the, in the past little while. Um, so let's move on, I think, to the algorithm and how we can go about growing our own social media and specifically focusing on TikTok. So, Hanya, I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Carlo. So um, when it comes to TikTok algorithm, as a, for a person like myself, when I first started uh, my TikTok account, there was three options. There. You could have a regular account, you could have a business account, or you could have a creator account. So I went for the creator account because I feel like that's more of my area than, than rather having a business account because I'm not that much of a business person, but I'm more like um, a, a, a creator and a content creator. That's what I do. So um, some of the things that you have to look for is the TikTok ads, because technically you could you could create ads on any social media. That could be Instagram, Facebook, the list goes on, and TikTok. So that's that's one of the things. TikTok reels, because that's where you're going to get um, like people to notice you through TikTok uh, to a three second, uh, to a three minute, to a three second videos. And same thing is like, depending on your content of the video, like you'll have like number of views. Cause for me personally, I have received about, uh, I've done a one air fryer recipe called Pakistani style corn air fryer recipe. And in that I received about 1,257 views in there. And that is just like, it's like a few, like um, it's like a short video. So that's like, so it depends on your engagement in there and it depends on your activity. And recently, um, as I know the elections are, are on the way, the, um, the Canadian elections 2021. So I recently tagged uh, Canada elections 2021 on my, inst on my TikTok and I just received an uh, awesome comment from them recently. So it depends on like how much are you're posting, what, are your, what is your content in there and how much views you're getting in there. So it's like, if you put something towards like social events as well, that's actually gonna get you in there. So it's like try to put everything in there because everything works on TikTok in my right. opinion. Right, so do you think, for TikTok, then I, I, I've got a couple of questions because I'm interested in terms of how, like how to grow your platform. How how do you think you should go about making videos? Do you think you should niche down on TikTok and kind of limit your page to, you know, have a specific niche, a specific topic? Or do you think you can kind of remain open on TikTok? Because I know on YouTube, it's definitely recommended to kind of niche down. Um, but we'll get into that later. What, what do you think in terms of niching down on TikTok? In my opinion, it could go both ways. Cause with me, it's like, I have like pretty much like every single thing in there. Like I don't have like a, uh, like a specific kind of niche. Mm -hmm. Like, um, although mostly uh, like half of my videos are just cooking videos, but it's like on top of that, I have like different things too. I have like reviews. I have like uh, whatever I'm doing, pretty much I put it in there into like few, uh, in like a short videos or like just like some photos in there. And from there, what I've noticed is even if it's like, even if it's something that is like something new you add in there, you still get a lot of views in there depending on what your account is. And it's like, yeah, there's this whole thing, the niche thing, but you got to see like, okay, it, like, are you make, like, I like, do you want to go for like, do you want to expand your business or do you uh, like, is it like a creator content creation kind of a, a situation? Like that's right. what I would Right. So I think the kind, the gist of it is what I'm getting is that you're still kind of going after a target audience, regardless yeah. of if there's a niche or if there's not a niche, right? Okay. It works either ways. But okay, it's like, so, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Like some platforms, like if for that, you've got a niche down, for some, you don't. Right. And do you think um, shorter videos do better on TikTok? Or do you think the longer videos, because they've they've let you increase the duration of the videos now on TikTok, I think it's up to like a minute and whatnot. What do you think is the most successful for engagement? I would say about a three minute video, because then it shows like what you're doing, what your content is, and you get the people engaged in that way. So um, that's my opinion in there. Great. Great. Okay. So I'm going to move forward now to Instagram. So Instagram, Instagram is very similar to uh, TikTok. 
uh, the algorithm of it. So the thing is, you could do Instagram ads as well. You could also do Facebook ads. I'm not going to talk about Facebook today, but it's like you could also do like um, like tons of different ads on pretty much every platform. So the Instagram is about like the thing what matters in there is like, what is your post about? Do you have an ad for that and your activity and your interaction activity? So it's like on the likes, on the comments. And uh, whenever you put up a post, again, there's this whole thing of where you have, um, you could do Instagram pages or you could do uh, just like, you could have a personal account. It depends up to you. So it's like, if you have a if you have a page, you'll definitely see algorithm there. But if you have a personal account, you don't see algorithm in there because it's just, it's like, it's up to you. You could make it personal, you could make it private. It's that depends on you. Anything you guys want to add? Yeah, I'll add something. Um... Uh, I've been using Instagram to, you know, for my personal use and then also for uh, businesses and real estate agents because I help them with marketing, right? And I think Instagram is a very great tool if you are a business owner. And I'll give some like kind of like tips while we're at it because I think a lot of here are watching, you know, maybe want to grow a business or maybe they want to learn about this so they can help somebody, right? So I think number one, when, you know, using Instagram as a platform to grow your business, I see a lot of accounts make a mistake of, you know, just posting whatever, right? And that really hurts your um, look, right? Because in Instagram, everything's about like, you know, the first 20, 30 seconds when they first go on your page, right? If your page is really nice, like it's clean, you're like, oh, let me check this out, right? So I think Instagram is a very great tool to use for businesses. And another great thing about it is um, Instagram has ads you can run, right? Um, later on, we'll talk about those. And those ads, you can really like, you know, specify where you want to go. For example, if you're a real estate agent and you want to sell a house, you can pinpoint exactly people that are interested in selling houses and pinpoint people that are in your area, right? So imagine posting an ad. And, you know, spending only, you know, three, four bucks and doing that where back in the day, you'd have to spend a lot of money to be put on a billboard or something like that. Right. It's kind of crazy to think about how we're going from the traditional often marketing. Seen, like Sorry, often real estate agents, what I've noticed, like even for my page, I often see them following me. And it's like, I don't have any interest in there, but it's like, they just like start following whoever they see. And there's a lot going on about cryptocurrency as well, but there has been in the news that it is a scam. So please try to avoid this because that's also, oh, that's that actually comes in another situation. But the thing is, it's like, yeah, like you, as long as you have a good following and stuff, like you, like you don't need a billboard for that. You could just get it through Instagram. And plus there's Instagram stores that you could also do. In yeah, there. exactly. And like I was saying it back then, it used to be the traditional marketing, like, you know, door to door sales or like, you'd hire somebody to go market yourself, right? But now you could just hire one person and they can pretty much run a whole marketing firm for you and run it through your social media. It's kind of crazy to think about how, it, how we're changing so much, right? Um, if you guys remember even before COVID, um, we, didn't, we never used Zoom, right? Imagine we never thought that we would like go on Skype, I mean, not go, go on Zoom and do our classes, or university and have meetings but now i think zoom gave an opportunity it's another platform that gives us an opportunity to work from you know different areas in the world right and you know attend places that sometimes we can attend so i think it's really crazy how i agree platforms... and you get to meet so many different people on zoom by just yeah, exactly. sitting at home it's a good way to exactly. connect network and all these things exactly yeah, I, I think it's changed you know we, there could be a whole nother session on that but even the the workplace and how you know the the full return to in-person work doesn't necessarily have to happen and now get, even getting into that then you know a lot of people's jobs I, I know people that, that have actually ended up quitting their nine to five job and now are just full-time on social media because they are making such a steady income from it and um you know there there is so much growth going on in their cha channels so um, yeah, I think, I think that's definitely, you know, a, a good point. And the algorithm too, the, the way that it's formed, I know it's different, you know, based on what, what, what type of social media you're on, but it's really interesting that they're all somewhat connected. Like, for example, if I'm looking at something, even on Google, um, maybe a certain, 
you know, maybe a certain site or um, like clothes, for example, I'll see an ad for it a few hours later on TikTok yeah. and I'll see the same ad on Instagram. So, or maybe not something exactly the same, but something similar that they know that I like. So it's, it's really, it's really interesting how all of these um, platforms are connected and they're all like, you know, kind of storing some information about your preferences and what you like. And I guess then that, that that's what creates the algorithm. Yeah. And uh, I also want to add one more thing. If there's anybody on the chat on Facebook, feel free to ask any questions about, you know, growing an Instagram account or, you know, techniques, we can uh, definitely answer your questions. And uh, one more thing, if there's any, you know, young, young generation of people watching, like, you know, Gen Z's, millennials, or even, you know, older people, I think it's very good to, you know, to go on these social medias and, and learn it, right? Because it gives me a kind of an opportunity to acting from the business aspect to make money while being at home, right? If you look at COVID, um, you know, what happened to a lot of people, they lost their job. But like, if you're, you know, an influencer or even, you know, using Instagram or social media to make money, you still be making money during COVID. So that's a great opportunity for, you know, a lot of young people to learn and take advantage of. Absolutely, you guys. I love these points. If I can even just ask some questions and maybe talk about this a little bit. I've seen recently, I mean, let's let's just talk about Instagram stories and Instagram reels for engagement, right? Because Instagram has so many different ways with how you can interact with the app. You can post, you can put stories on your page, you can put now your, your stories on your main page and keep them and highlight them, right? And then you can also do reels. Um, yeah. But what do you guys think is the best way on Instagram now to, to grow your page? Because I'm hearing a lot of people talk about stories, posting hashtags with your stories because that can gain traction through a lot of accounts. And then I'm hearing a lot of people also mention now um, using Reels because Reels, Reels is kind of along the same lines of TikTok. You can endlessly scroll through the videos. And again, the algorithm is very similar because the algorithm will, algorithm will recommend things that you want to see. How, how do you guys feel about the reels in and my the stories? Opinion, if you're referring to hashtags, what I'd say is like, because <clears> I know <throat> people who have their own businesses. And one thing I've seen, like, if you want to get customers, if you want to get people to come to your account and actually see your stuff, hashtags as much. doesn't matter if you're on Instagram or, um, or TikTok. It's just that that's the way how you get people to attract them to come to you. And then... Um, for the thing with reels, I think reels has become like a competitive thing now because like every like every social media platform has reels, and I think it started from Insta, from TikTok because they were first like three second reels. Now every now every platform wants to do the same thing. Right. Yeah, I would actually. Um, yeah, I think that's a great point. I I think personally, hashtags is a big part to do in it, but um, I also think that reels it gives that really good opportunity because nowadays everybody's like you know want to watch something quick and get it over with you know what i mean like they like to see something short entertaining first 30 seconds if they're interested they're going to click your page right so i feel like that the reels they kind of you know did the same thing as tiktok tiktok kind of did the same thing as vine if you want to go really back right um i think reels really give you an opportunity to grow with the use of hashtags because you can actually use hashtags on reels too right so i think reels on instagram is a is a really great way to promote your business right as well as you know show people the creative side of you right and <clears throat> that's that's what i think absolutely so it, it seems like we're just kind mm -hmm. of growing and expanding and improving on existing ideas from other apps that maybe have not survived or will survive the test exactly. of time. <laughs> great i feel like we could do a whole session on just hashtags um, but I'll move a little bit into YouTube. I have some experience in YouTube. I've had a YouTube channel for a little while now. I'm trying to push it towards that 6k subscriber mark. So if anyone who is watching here wants to go check out my YouTube channel, it's Carlo Joseph on YouTube. Just type that in. Now, um, let's talk about niching down. Cause I know on TikTok we kind of talked about how you don't necessarily have to have a niche now with YouTube most people are going to tell you, you need to have a niche. You need to be a food channel. You need to be a vlogging channel, which is like the hardest to break out into and get 
traction yeah. with, by the way, as a, as a vlogging channel, right? Raven, I'm sure you can agree with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but for, to be honest with you, I have had my YouTube channel for a number of years now, and I don't think I have ever niched down. And I have oh, quite a few successful videos on there. And, and one of them was from my, when I was younger and I, I kind of operated a bit of an exotic animal rescue for quite some time. And I made a video of my animal room and that, that gained over 200,000 something views, which I would say is, you know, pretty successful um, for one of, uh, a small channel's first videos. Then just recently, I posted a video about a side business that I was doing during my summers. I learned how to detail cars. And I thought I would share some of the knowledge that I learned on detailing cars on YouTube by posting a video on how to clean cloth car seats. And that gained some traction. So if you go to my channel right now, you will quite literally see both. You will see an animal video and a car detailing video in the exact same YouTube. Now, so I'm not saying that that's a fluke by any means, because that video also has over 200,000 views and is climbing. <laughs> but it's interesting how even after just some time has gone by, YouTube has recognized both of those videos and said, you know, this is useful information. People obviously enjoy watching this and they've put it out there. And that's one thing that kind of is the same as YouTube as some of these TikTok and Instagram things. But I think more so with YouTube is that YouTube growth happens from YouTube recommending your content. So with other platforms like TikTok and Instagram, they're putting your content in front of other people. Yes, based on the engagement. But if YouTube is seeing your watch time, so I'll skip to my third point. Watch time is very, very important in YouTube. It's what YouTube wants. YouTube wants its viewers to stay on the app for as long as possible. So if you have a long duration of watch time for your videos, that's telling YouTube people are coming to your channel. They're staying on it for a very long time, watching the entire video, getting something from it, leaving a comment, leaving a like. That's why you see all your favorite YouTubers asking people to do those things, reminding them multiple times in a video. It's because that works. That tells the YouTube algorithm people are engaged in the video. People are interacting. Um, kind of the same thing with like leaving a like, you know, sharing or saving the video on TikTok, except I think it's more to a degree that really takes the time to watch the analytics because YouTube is a platform where people <clears> are <throat> uploading longer videos, you know, and they have been doing that for quite some time now. You can have up to an hour on YouTube if you're monetized, right? And you can make full blown movies with some channels. Yeah. So, uh, all of that. Think about what your channel is about, but more importantly, think about if you have valuable information to share. I think that's all it comes down to. I would say don't necessarily have to, you know, pick a niche right away. If you have valuable information, share it because most likely other people are going to find that valuable as well and find and remember that value within yourself. Um, another good thing about YouTube, thumbnails and clickbait works. It really works. Uh, here's an example of a clickbait kind of thumbnail that I used for my detailing video. Now I, I, I have here, don't use dish soap. Here's why mm. dot, dot, dot with an arrow pointing to Dawn dish soap, because I noticed there were a lot of videos on YouTube and one with like a million something views that said, use dish soap on your car seat. So I wanted to do something different. I created a thumbnail that was kind of um, taking ideas from the other one, but flipping them and saying, hey, don't do this, right? And I have my hand out and it's, it just makes you want to click on it. And I'm sure everyone has seen those thumbnails on YouTube that it's like a person in the corner going like, whoa, right? And then yeah. a, a really like funny <clears throat> caption or something that just makes you want to <clears throat> click on the video. That's half of YouTube. You cannot deny that thumbnails and clickbait titles really work on YouTube. That's what people want to want to see. That's what they're there for. Um, and it's what gets the most clicks. You're trying to get that person to click on your video. More often than not, people will actually put an image of a mouse, of, of someone hovering over the video, clicking on it to try and incentivize people to just simply click on the video. If they start watching, you've won half the battle, right? So that's some of the advice. Um, in the interest of time, I will move forward. <laughs> Pass it off to you, Ravindu, with Instagram Meets Business. Yeah, um, <clears throat> thanks so much. Uh, I think 
like you were saying, YouTube is a great platform to build. I think, like you said, the, the, the thumbnails, the, you know, the kind of the niche that's hundred percent. Right. And, um, yeah, let's talk about Instagram and business guys. So like I was saying during COVID and, you know, a lot of people are home, a lot of people use their, you know, social media platform to start up a small business, whether it be, you know, I remember Carlo, you saying you had friends that were, you know, making masks and selling them. They might have used Facebook, right? But, you know, Instagram can also be used there too. And I usually like to use Instagram and Facebook together because they kind of um, go in sets together because Facebook bought Instagram, right? So if you go to the next slide, Carlo, I think it's Facebook Business Week, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I want to talk about this because facebook and instagram um they're they're separate platforms but they're they're connected through what's called business suite right and if you have a business page or uh, you help manage a business page you can access this and you can actually download the app so what's great about this is it's pretty much a software that facebook created and it it puts both instagram and facebook in one app right and you can see kind of like the the analytics of what people are doing. So for example, let's say you posted an Instagram post on a business account, right? You can see what is my engagement and what is my reach. For example, let's say you reached a thousand people, but one person liked it, right? So like, what is that telling you? It's like, oh man, you know, I got to change stuff, stuff about my post. So I think this is a really great tool. If you're a business owner, um, if you're thinking of becoming a business owner, if you help run a business or you want to eventually get into this start learning this platform because it gives that great opportunity another great opportunity about this is <clears throat> back then if you were going to hire somebody as like a, you know a marketing manager or like somebody to manage your page you would have to give them your facebook account right pretty much in the sense like your page account but now with business suite you can actually add them as like an administrator and they can manage both Instagram and Facebook accounts and they can reply to all the, all the messages that come through from their own account, but using business suite. Isn't that kind of crazy to think about? So the two apps are connected and they're interchangeable in terms of when you reply to one, it's replying on, on both platforms. No. So for example, let's say Carlo, that you sent me a message on my Instagram, mm -hmm. right? And for example, let's say I'm, I'm a manager for Moksha Canada and I didn't have Instagram downloaded, but I had Business Suite and I was given access to Business Suite. So I can actually reply from Business Suite as Moksha Canada to you. Okay. Right. Okay. Without getting the access there. And another crazy thing about this is Facebook Suite also allows you to run ads, right? Like advertisements of, you know, for example, Let's say you're trying to sell something and you want to, you have a specific niche, right? Let's say like bicycles, <laughs> you can actually search up like Canada or like Edmonton or Toronto, and you can search up people interested in bicycles. And I'll show you what like your niche is. For example, it might say 200,000. Well, there you go. That's your market. And now you can start running these ads daily or like, you know, once a week and it, Instagram and Facebook, they will run it automatically for you and you can do it on both right have you guys been flipping through the instagram stories and sometimes the ad comes up yes yes yeah, that's, yeah, all the time. that's how you do it right i think this is a great tool for business owners for you know young entrepreneurs to learn it another thing is you can save a lot of time by using it for example let's say you're going on a one month vacation right but you are an influencer. So you have to post stuff daily or weekly. What you can actually do is you can create the post beforehand and you can put it on business suite as kind of like a schedule. So it'll post automatically on the time that it needs to, right? So it saves you a lot of time instead of doing it one by one automatically, mm -hmm. right? And another That's thing, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you a question then. So do you feel like, um, you know, sites like Kijiji, for example, are dying due to the fact that there's 100%. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah. I remember we talked about this before because if you look at Facebook, they got they pretty much are everything, right? Yeah. They have a marketplace where you can kind of sell stuff. And a lot of us young people, when we're buying new cars, guess where we look? Facebook marketplace. Because it's so simple because it's kind of like everything's in one. Yeah. Right. So I think these platforms, they're becoming like before it was just like entertainment. Now they're becoming more like everything, business, entertainment. And it's convenient too, because at the same time, instead of making, instead of waiting, instead of like taking two hours to make a community account, put in all the ads and everything, you're just doing it on Facebook. It saves a lot of time. Correct. It does. And also if you're, if you're a Twitch streamer or like a gamer, you know, Facebook is actually kind of going in towards that too. It's Facebook, you know, live streaming and, you know, kind of gaming there. You guys probably seen a lot of uh, gamers yes. there. Yes, we, we, we've touched about this. And this is something I find extremely interesting, too, because Facebook gaming has gained so much traction yeah. over the past little while. Um, we have these, these streamers moving from platforms like Twitch, which have been known for streaming for quite some time, now moving into Facebook gaming. So I'm, I'm so curious and so interested to see where that goes as well. Yeah, it's a business. I, I it's a business it, it, as well. It is a business. It is hmm. a business. And I think the main reason is, is just Facebook just really got on the idea of why don't we just make everything in one? Because people like stuff simple, right? Why do you think, you know, stuff like skip the dishes blew up? Because, you know, right. it, it's, it's hard to say, but people are lazy. They don't want to go out, but we don't, we want to stay in like one area and do stuff, right? For example, in our right. apps. I think if you're looking to start a business or anything, the, the key thing is convenience. Convenience is Correct. something that will never get old or go out of style, that's what people want, right? You know, time is money, people say, and it's true. Whatever you can, if you can accomplish the most in the shortest amount of time, people will always go to that. So if you're able to check your social media while at the same time looking at if you can buy something through Marketplace while at the same time having your business account linked, then, you know, it's all interlinked. So absolutely. Yeah, Convenience and place. accessibility, right? Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. Facebook, just like you know they took it before anybody else can take it right so i think that's kind of where they're shining and i feel if you if you don't use these platforms as a business owner or as an entrepreneur you're kind of way behind the curve right sure. because nowadays nobody really like let's say for example you met somebody and they're like oh this is my business and they give you the business card the first thing you do is you try to search them up and find their business online right yeah and if they don't have a nice platform, guess what? You're most likely going to lose a customer, you know, lose a sale, lose somebody that could have been led to something. So yeah, that's why. Views that, are a huge thing. Too. Like, it, it, I actually did do it with us. Um, it was social enterprise. It was a it was a thrift store. I actually did do it during COVID, uh, during the lockdown. And uh, one thing I noticed is when I posted something on the marketplace for a little while, I got like um, responses like right away. People were right away ready to buy the books, the um, the decor, and all these things. And although I couldn't I couldn't um, actually put it on the Facebook marketplace due to a uh, few regulations, but um, but the response in there is like pretty quick. So as an entrepreneur, it's like, you should definitely look into the Facebook marketplace. 100%, yeah. And as, as a youth, like, because this podcast or, you know, session is aimed for, you know, younger generation youth, Gen Zs like ourselves. Um, it's really good for us because we kind of grew up with technology, right? So we can really get a handle on it easy. And for us to learn this and, you know, do much of it as we can we can eventually like you have an opportunity to create a business from using these platforms right so um yeah it's my idea do you guys have any questions in the chat or you carlo do you have any questions anything to add now um with with facebook gaming becoming a thing for streamers right if we can kind of just flip back to that now yeah. i mean obviously streaming has become such a huge ordeal within the past little while especially the pandemic i feel like a lot of us were streaming you know netflix youtube whatever it was but live streaming even if it's not games has just become so popular and now with facebook becoming this hub essentially for kind of everything right we're talking about accessibility on like a brand new level um how do you think other platforms like Twitch, for example, or even even now we have YouTube doing YouTube live, right? I know yeah. um one of the biggest streamers on Twitch 
Tim the Tap Man. If anyone yeah. is familiar in the chat, if, if if anyone's familiar, let me know. But he has just switched from Twitch over to YouTube now. Do you think Twitch is going to survive? Ravindu, like I, I'm super curious. Um, and also, it's, folks, just give me a sec. I'm going to switch screens here for a sec. So I'll just open it up to us. But Yeah, honestly, um, Carlo, I think it's it's really hard because for Twitch, they're they're only on one thing, right? And that's streaming. But if you look at these other platforms, they're kind of trying to do everything, right? Even with, um, if you look at in TikTok, people have started doing streams there too. Have you guys noticed that? Like they start to stream their games and stuff there as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, for exactly. It, it, it's it's crazy because if you're not following the you know that trend of you know changing as a business, it's gonna be really hard for Twitch to survive. So, Carlo, honestly, I think in the next couple of years, if Facebook Gaming and you know YouTube Live, if they keep growing the way they are, most likely Twitch will end up you know dying. Right. I mean, it's understandable. I mean, I, I, I do enjoy the platform for some things. I think that the link between my Amazon Prime subscription and my Twitch Prime subscription is, is neat and fun. But honest, honestly, I, with the use of Super Chat in YouTube now uh, and being able to pay streamers and, and give little donations just off of Super Chat on YouTube, I'm yeah. super interested to see where that grows. Uh, and then Facebook Gaming as well, just being a platform that is is it's nice because you know, you can get some work done, take a break, and then hop over to Facebook gaming on the same app, right? Exactly. I mean, that's that's just such an interesting idea to me, and I think that's kind of where we're headed um, in the future. I'll so, ask you guys um, one more question before we end it off here. Right. I know we have, like, a couple of minutes. Um, what do you guys think these next, these social, social media platforms, what do you think they'll go towards next? I know we talked about marketplace, we talked about business, what do you think the next thing they will do? Wow. <laughs> so I know it's a hard yeah. question. Maybe yeah, in chat, yeah. does anybody anybody have any idea? Anybody in chat want to give us some ideas? <laughs> <laughs> if not, no worries. It's, it's hard to think about what they haven't touched. What yet. they haven't, right? Yeah. But you could have said you could have said the same thing before TikTok came out, right? Nobody ever thought that people were gonna dance in front of a camera and you know um increasing versatility, says Cynthia. Yeah, I think that's definitely definitely a great point. Now uh I, I'm I'm personally interested to see what happens with theater. And um, I, I know for like my industry, for example, uh, kind of shut down right when COVID hit. And I'm interested to see what happens in the online presence in terms of theater performance and shows. And well, if we can improve on that. And like Zoom, uh, playwright and theater content creation in there. So I recently just came across it a few days ago. So that's something like I agree. That would be really interesting too. Very cool. What if like, they end up creating something like kind of like netflix on facebook that would be interesting right absolutely yeah i can definitely see that happening yeah when you said that i really thought about that because i think cineplex and all those movie theaters are kind of dying right now because of netflix and disney plus right so maybe that's the next way for these social media platforms to go absolutely so speaking of social media platforms Thank you so much for being here, everyone, and you know, inputting some comments there in the chat. Um, please make sure to follow all of Moksha Canada's social medias here. You have Moksha Canada Foundation on YouTube, at Moksha Canada on Instagram. If you're here on Facebook, Moksha Canada Foundation on Facebook, and at Moksha Canada on Twitter. Um, I'll do a little plug for my own Instagram. I'm at Carlo V. Joseph on Instagram. You guys want to do little plugs for your socials? Yeah, I'm Ravindu on 33 on Instagram. Yeah, I'm Hunky Pavels on Instagram. And I don't have Instagram, but you can find <laughs> me on Facebook. I'm Jasenia Raman on Facebook. So feel free to add me. And again, we're really looking forward to this series. Thank you all so much for coming out today. And um, just to give a brief intro for our Thursday session, we'll be delving a little bit deeper into the, the good side and the bad side of social media and really just digging up some 
some stuff from there and talking about, you know, the pros and the cons. I think today's conversation was very enlightening and we covered a, covered a lot about all the growth opportunities um, that social media can um, can give. But at the same time, you know, there is there's always a second side to a story. So excited to chat about that with you all um, on Thursday, same time, 6.30 p.m., Please um, like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. We will be also posting this to our YouTube channel within the next 24 hours. So you can also um, rewatch or send it to anyone else who may have missed the episode. But anyways, thank you all so much. Um, I'm Jasenia, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Ravindu, Carlo, and Hania. And we will see you on Thursday. Take care, everyone. See you guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye.